Hey guys, welcome back to another very exciting visual effects tutorial. Due to popular demand and all the requests from you guys, today we're going to blow up a building. So they're all going to be here, right here in Melbourne. What the hell? Holy crap. Um, yeah. Um, yeah uh, when I started to record the After Effects part for this tutorial, I noticed that it was getting very, very long, so I decided to split this tutorial up into two parts. In the first part, I'm going to show you how to track your footage, add the building into the scene, and then add some explosion elements onto it. In the second part, I'm going to show you how to refine your effect by adding some debris, the smoke, and the actual lighting for the explosions to put it all together into a really cool looking building destruction effect. Now, when I first created this effect, I actually did a full 3D integration effect where I had a 3D building in the scene, but I noticed that because the building is so far away from the camera, you can actually get away with just using an image of a building and destroying that. Now, in saying that, I will assume that you are fairly comfortable working in After Effects and that, for example, you know how to use the 3D camera tracker. If you don't know how to use the 3D camera tracker, I do have a tutorial on it, which I recommend you check out. Other than that, I will assume that you know things like mats, masks, compositions, and that you generally have an idea on how to build effects in After Effects. But without further ado, let's jump right into it. Here I have the footage Jimmy and me filmed in Melbourne for the building destruction effect. As you can see, Jimmy has the camera aimed straight at me standing in front of the skyline with enough space to add the fake building into the background. Then, as the first explosion strikes, we both duck as if startled by the explosion. Notice that this camera movement is very fast and therefore the frames are very blurry. This is important because it prevented me from tracking the entire clip with the 3D camera tracker at once. I ended up setting up two effects, one before this ducking movement and one after. We then rise slowly and stare and point at the imaginary building as two more explosions strike and the building collapses into a cloud of debris and smoke. As I mentioned, I created the building destruction effect for the first part of the shot separately from the second part because I was not able to track across the hectic camera movement. For this tutorial, we will focus on the second part only as the steps are exactly the same as for the first part but with some added detail like debris and smoke. So I will trim down my footage to only start once we rise again. You can use the B and E keys on your keyboard to define the start and end positions for your working area. You can then right click on the working area bar and trim the composition to fit. This is probably the spot where you will start once you've filmed your own footage. To start off we need to track the footage using the 3D camera tracker. Now it is good practice to mask out the areas that the 3D camera tracker should care about. We want to only track the skyline in the background and don't want to confuse the tracker with me moving through the shot. For this. Duplicate your footage by pressing Ctrl D. The area we want to track is mainly the skyline to the right of where I am standing. Make sure the top layer is selected, move to a time position of where you have a clear view of the area you want the 3D camera tracker to care about and select the masking tool. Draw a mask around the area you want to track. Open up the mask properties and enable the keyframe for the mask path property. We now want to move through the entire clip and animate the mask to only include the background we want to track. Here for example is a moment where I start to overlap the mask out area. What you want to do is you want to create a few keyframes and pull the mask back in to avoid any actors getting into the area that will be tracked. In other times you may want to expand the mask to include as much of the footage as you can while avoiding to include any moving objects. Hmm, nothing bad towards the second part of the clip so we should be good to go. Just to verify, disable the visibility of your base footage layer and scrub through your composition. You should only see the static background elements you want to track. Now before we can actually start tracking, we will need to pre-compose our masked out layers. Make sure the top layer is selected and pre-compose it by pressing Ctrl, Shift, C. Ensure that you have to move all attributes into the new composition radio button selected to make sure that the mask gets nested into the new comp. Then hit OK. I'm just going to re-enable the composition background color. Scrub through your footage to ensure the mask out area looks exactly as you would expect then apply the 3D camera tracker effect to the tracking comp. In case you didn't notice, this footage is obviously sped up, but when you're waiting for the 3D camera tracker to do its work, go grab a coffee, a coke, a water or whatever other liquid you like to drink, or if you don't know what you're doing, use the time to check out my 3D camera tracker tutorial. Once the 3D camera tracker has completed its work, you should have all of the track points overlaid onto the layer 
properly following the elements in your scene. If the elements in your scene are not properly tracked, try using the detailed analysis option or ensure that you have a shot where you are moving your camera a little bit less. Cool, I'd say this looks pretty good. Now let's add the building into the scene. Of course this will depend very much on what city skyline you have filmed, but for this shot I will be adding the building into this gap here. Zoom in onto your tracked footage and pick a building that is parallel to the one that you want to add. Choose and click three track points that are positioned flat on the surface of that building. These three track points are used to define a plane in 3D space and you can now right click and select create solid and camera. This will add a new solid at the 3D position of the plane defined by the three track points. Let's call this solid tracking solid. I'm also going to unhide the base footage layer so we can see the full shot and not just the mask out tracking comp. If you now scrub through your footage you should see the tracking solid follow the position of the building in your scene that you have attached it to. Hop over to your project window. One thing I always like to do is keep my project well organized and I have a pre-comp folder where I like to move all my pre-compositions into. I will quickly drop the tracking comp we created into there so everything stays nice and neat. Next you need an image of a building that you can fit into your skyline. There's plenty of free images of buildings online that you can use. What I have done is use the Metropolitan Pack from Video Copilot to make my own image of a building. Let me quickly show you how I did that. All I did was use the footage that we filmed and then created a 3D building using the Element 3D plugin. Here's just the building. If I quickly jump into Element 3D, you can see the building model I used. There is an extension pack available for Element 3D called Metropolitan that includes a large number of cool looking 3D buildings and I picked one that seemed to suit the skyline of Melbourne. The main reason for me going through this effort was that it allowed me to scale and rotate the building properly to align with the other buildings. Furthermore, I added some lights into my scene to illuminate the building in a similar way that the real buildings in the scene are illuminated. This simply makes the effect look a little bit more realistic. Because many of you may not have this plugin, I decided not to do a full 3D integration effect for this tutorial and instead export this image as a PNG to use for the building destruction effect. So you can simply go online, find yourself an image of a building that you want to destroy and use that. You may just have to clean it up a little bit and mask out the actual building. Let's go back to the project window and select your building image. What we want to do is replace the tracking solid in our scene with the building image. But I don't want to lose the tracking solid so I will duplicate it first. After you duplicated it, remember to hide the original solid layer. Now with the new copy selected, drag the building image onto it while holding down the alt key on your keyboard. This will replace the solid with the image of the building. I will also rename this layer to building image. Now all we see is the corner of a building floating in space and that is because the image is way scaled up. Simply zoom out, grab the corner of your building image layer and scale it down again until the building fits into your scene. The cool thing is that everything is tracked so you can now move the building layer around as well to position it exactly where you want. Yep, about there seems good. Note that it will overlap all of the other buildings at this point but we will deal with that shortly. Notice that the building image, because we replaced the copy of our tracking solid, is in fact a 3D layer placed in our scene. What this means is that as we scrub through our composition, the building will follow the movement of the camera precisely. One thing you will notice though is that some frames of the footage are rather blurry due to the fast camera movement. This makes our building look very out of place because it is crisp and sharp for every frame. You can fix this by enabling the motion blur switch on the building image layer and on the composition itself. Hmm, I'm just noticing that the building is a little bit off at the beginning of the shot, but it seems fine for the rest of the scene, so we won't worry about it too much for now. You can always fix little things like that up by just adding a few keyframes to the building image, or worst case, track your footage again using different tracking options. Notice that all of the buildings in the skyline have a slight blue tint to them, and our building does not. We can easily blend our building better into the skyline by applying a curves effect. Apply the curves effect to the building image layer and simply bring out the blue channel a touch to blend it in a bit better. Of course, depending on the building image you are using, you can also adjust the brightness or other colors to blend it in nicely into your skyline. This seems to be enough for our scene though. Now let's finally prevent our building from overlapping all of the other buildings. Again, duplicate the tracking solid and call it skyline matte. We will use this solid as a matte layer onto our building image to cut out all of the elements that are in front of it. So move the matte above the building layer. Next, and this is important, we want to make sure that the resolution of this matte is sufficiently high so that we do not end up with jagged edges. 
For this, select the mat and open up the solid settings. Uh oh, less than 300 pixels resolution, that won't do. Jack up the resolution to something huge like 3000 by 3000. Then zoom out and scale the solid down until it covers the entire skyline. There should be plenty of space around the building itself as this mat will also have to obscure the other destruction elements we will be adding later. Next, lower the opacity of the mat to almost zero so we can see the footage underneath and hide the building image we added. Select the pen tool and start drawing a mask around all of the buildings and elements that are in front of the building we want to destroy. You want to be as accurate as you can with this task, otherwise your new building won't sit realistically in the scene. If you are having trouble masking out finer elements, be sure to zoom in some more. After Effects also has a tendency to close your masks prematurely. If that happens, simply press Ctrl U a couple of times to undo the last few points and continue drawing your mask. There, I added a detailed mask around everything in front of the building. Now, if your skyline is weird like Melbourne's, don't forget to add a few masks to cut out any holes that should appear in the mat. For example, gaps in the building like this one. Again, ensure to zoom into your footage if you are having trouble creating the mask. Finally, expand the mask properties for these holes and set the mask mode to subtract to cut it out of the mat. Finally, set the opacity of the mat back to 100%. Bam! Done! Well, not quite. Unhide the building image layer and set the track mat option for the layer to alpha inverted. Check that out! We can now scrub through our footage and the building will follow the camera realistically, standing right in the middle of our skyline. Now let's get ready to add some destruction elements onto the building. Because we want the skyline map we created to obscure the building, the explosions, the debris and smoke and anything else we will be adding, we need to group all of those elements into a new composition. Because we are working with tracked footage and 3D layers, we first need to select the base footage and the camera and duplicate them. Select the copied layers and drag them below the building image. Add the building image to your selection and pre-compose these three layers. I will call this comp building comp. Do note that the track mat option on this layer has been reset, so set it back to alpha inverted. We want the mat to affect everything in our building comp. Jump into this new composition and you will notice that at the very top, after Effects automatically also copied and pre-composed the skyline mat. I don't think this happens in every version of After Effects, but if the layer is there, simply delete it. Next, since we already have the footage in the parent composition, we want to use the footage in this composition only as a guide. Simply right click on the base footage and mark it as a guide layer to exclude it from being rendered in the final effect. Time to finally add some explosions. And again, I'm just doing a little bit of cleanup and keeping all of my pre-compositions in the pre -comp folder. Now, as always, for this tutorial, I will be using stock footage elements from the Actions Essential 2 package from Video Copilot, but I did recently discover a new great site for free stock footage, and that is footagecrate.com. The great thing is that all of the elements they have on their site are already pre-keyed, so you won't get ugly black boxes around the stock footage elements. If you are looking for free stock footage explosions to follow along with this tutorial, do hop over there and check it out. I will put a link in the description of this video. Go to the time where you want your explosions to start and drag an explosion stock footage element into your composition. Make sure the explosion triggers at the exact right moment. For this particular explosion, I will also trim out a few frames from the start just to make the explosion look a little bit more powerful. Next, enable the 3D switch on the explosion layer and then copy the position from the building image layer onto it. You can do this simply by revealing the position property by pressing P, selecting it and copying it using Ctrl C. Then select the explosion layer and press Ctrl V to paste the position onto it. The explosion is now placed at the same position as the building is in the 3D scene. Again, scale the explosion down and position it to fit into your scene right where you want it. Let's check out what this actually looks like. Pretty cool already. Maybe I'll scale it down a little bit more since the building is so far away. Yep, that's better. Now, all you have to do is repeat this process as often as you want to add all and any explosions or other effects you want into your scene and position them right on top of your building. I will speed through this as there's nothing new here that you haven't already seen. I'm simply placing more stock footage elements into my scene to fill out the first building explosion effect. Once you're done, this is likely what your first explosion might look like. Notice that I also animated the opacity of the explosion layers 
to fade them out a little bit sooner as the explosions were getting a little bit too dark towards the end. Also, one thing I tend to do to almost any layer I add to any effect is to apply a curves adjustment to blend it into the scene a little bit better. For these explosions, I just want to bump up the brightness a little bit so they look a little bit more uniform and fit together a bit better. That looks nicer already. Next, and again I'm speeding through this, I duplicated all three explosion layers and repositioned them to occur a few seconds later at a higher position on the building. I also swapped a few of them around so these three didn't look exactly the same as the first three. Again, there's nothing new here for you to learn. Here are the final explosions one after another. Oh, one thing I'm noticing is that one explosion layer is still used as a mat for the building. That's not what we want. I'm just going to quickly disable the mat on the building. Let's add a glow effect to all of our explosions to not only increase their intensity, but to also bind the individual layers together a little bit more organically. For this, select all of the explosion layers and pre-compose them. I will call this composition, surprise, surprise, explosions comp. Scrubbing through the composition, you will notice that you can't see any explosions. That is happening because the explosions are 3D layers, but we did not copy the camera into the new explosions comp. One way to get around this problem is to actually enable the collapse transformation switch on the explosions layer. And there they are again. Now search for the glow effect and apply it to the explosions comp layer. Tweak these parameters to your liking. You mainly want to play around with the glow threshold and the glow radius until you have a fairly strong glow. Now this effect is starting to look a little bit too candy. So let's bring down the saturation with the hue and saturation effect. Simply apply the effect to the layer and reduce the master saturation. Make the explosion look a little bit more realistic and less cartoony. This looks much better, I like it. Of course, feel free to tweak this effect in any way you want to suit your scene and your needs. Now, before we wrap this first part up, let's make the building sink down and collapse after the second explosion strikes. This is really easy to do. Go to the time position where you want the entire building to have disappeared. Reveal the position property on the building image and create a keyframe. Move to a time where you want your building to start sagging off and create another keyframe. Go back to the last keyframe, actually let's reposition it to be a little bit sooner and increase the Y position of the building image until it sits below all of the other buildings that will obscure it. I will also animate the Z rotation of the building a tiny bit, maybe 2 or 3 degrees around the Z axis. This will add the illusion that the building is losing balance as it collapses. Finally, select all of the keyframes on the building image and hit F9 on your keyboard to ease the keyframes in and out. This will cause the building to start collapsing slowly and pick up speed as it sinks. Now, obviously our collapsing building is still overlapping everything else, but if we go back to the parent composition, we have a mat setup that will hide all elements of our building comp layer that sink behind the mat. So if you scrub through your footage, you will notice that not only the building, but also the explosions are obscured correctly by the buildings in front of it. Play the effect back to see what you've created so far. In the next part of this tutorial, we are going to finish off the effect by adding debris, smoke and the lighting for the actual explosions. For now, feel free to add whatever effects you want onto the building you are destroying, play around and experiment and just have some fun with this effect. I really hope you enjoyed the first part of my building destruction tutorial. Don't worry, I will upload the next part fairly soon. In the meantime, if you have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them in the section below. If you would like to show some support, please subscribe, hit that like button, share the video around. It really helps out a lot with the channel and if you're hungry for more, you can always find and follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Until next time, I will see you later.